Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. How's everyone today? Body's well. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to our faith and healing class. Um, welcome those who are joining us online. Uh, I'm Eddie Strino, pastor here at Abundant Grace Church, and uh, this is a class that we feed our spirit on the anointed Word of God, right? And uh, it's rich, it's good, it causes our faith to grow, and as our faith grows, we learn how to overcome. Amen. And uh, just because we're, we're hearing God's Word and being fed doesn't mean that we won't have or encounter situations, right? In fact, we're going to encounter them, which is why we need a steady diet of his word. Amen. It helps us. It builds our faith. It enables us to overcome. And, and one thing you can see very clearly that when you take this step of faith and you begin to exercise God's promises, and, uh, and we've been talking a lot about authority here, the believer's authority, the enemy immediately wants to come and try to challenge you. You know, subtle different ways, things to get you distracted, things to get, maybe get you upset, things like that, just to uh, steal your joy. And uh, if the enemy can rob you of your joy, he'll rob you of your faith. You know, because when you have joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And maybe we'll talk a little bit about that today, but I know that's one of the things sometimes when we, when we, when we talk about these, uh, the, the subject and the enemy and having problems, um, we may think of just symptoms in our body. Uh, but he'll also come with things that would rob you of your joy. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and uh, you know, bad news or something, an argument or any of those kind of things that would come in and begin to, uh, to steal your joy, to get your mind off of, you know, what you've been studying, what you have been looking at, and uh, just to get you focused on other things. And it always comes back to us uh, recognizing those kind of tactics and just centering ourselves again, opening up the Word and looking at it and allowing God's Word to begin to restore us. Because the Bible says that in His presence, there's fullness of joy. You know, when we are weak, He is strong. And, uh, and so that's what this class is about, and uh, we always trust the Holy Ghost to speak through me exactly what he wants, because God knows what we need to hear. So uh, have your Bible, make something, make sure you have something to take some notes on, and let's, uh, let's believe God together. Let's have faith in God that he's going to honor his word today, release our faith, believing that we're going to hear from him. Amen? Father, we thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you that Jesus is Lord. And no matter what's going on around us, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And our hope and confidence is always steadfast and in him. And so as we study your word today, Father, we honor it, we value it, we ask that you reveal it to us. Give us revelation, knowledge, Father, impartations of truth from your word today. Holy Spirit, speak through me accurately, boldly, exactly what you want and what you know we need to hear today. Answers to questions, Father, uh, confirmation, things that you've been speaking to us about already. We have ears to hear and we have hearts to receive it. So we expect that today, Lord. And as I open my mouth, I believe you will fill it with what you want us to know. And we say, most importantly, that you be glorified in this. And everything that's said and done would bring glory and honor to you and cause people to walk in a closer relationship and fellowship with you and come to know you those who may not even know you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we always uh, start off our class here with reading our scriptures. If you're tuning in for the first time, uh, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Uh, these classes are all, as you know, if you're not watching it live stream right now, they are all recorded. We have a YouTube channel. If you go to our webpage, you know, if you're not here in person or you're watching it live as it's happening, you can always go back and we recommend that you do. But go to our webpage, AbundantGraceChurch.com. We have a YouTube channel. There's a link right on our page. It'll take you to all of our messages. They're free. You can watch them over and over again. And, uh, and, and especially when the Lord's speaking to you about some things, we need to remember them, right? So you can go back as well as these classes, Tuesday through Friday, we have a Wednesday evening service uh, that, that is also at 7 p.m. That'll be tonight. I'm doing that one as well, um, which is also on there, and all our Sunday morning services at 10 a.m. So uh, avail yourself to those resources. They'll be good for you. Amen. So uh, 
we read our Ephesian prayers and uh, the one in Colossians as well, the one that Paul had prayed. And in doing so, we are receiving revelation knowledge, just like the word that we're saying. It's not a ritualistic thing. It's not a rule. It's not regulations that we must do. But we do it because we love and honor God, and we do it in faith. And God returns exactly what we're believing him for. Amen? And we're receiving, I'm telling you, tremendous revelation knowledge because of the faithfulness in praying these prayers. So join with us this morning. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 beginning in verse 17. Uh, I have, this is God's word translation, the GW. I have rewritten it in the first person sense as if we were the one praying it. Um, But you can follow along in whatever translation you may have. But uh, Paul goes on here to pray and we're praying this today as well. He says, I pray to you, the glorious father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. Are you a believer? Then it's working for you. Amen. Believers. It works for believers, not doubters, right? You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honored position the one next to you, the Father, on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and any other name that can be named, governments included, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him regarding the church, and you made him the head of everything for the good of the church. Now, we've spent a lot of time, we're going to talk about that a little bit again today, the, 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 the authority that has been delegated to us is for the benefit of the church, which is us, right? Um, he, delega- he did it for us because we would need it here, right? We would need it here. So the church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. The church is not a building. The church is the people. Right? We meet here in a building, but the church is the body of Christ. That's us. And uh, this authority that he stripped the enemy of has been given to us so that we can exercise it and occupy until the Lord comes. Right? And if we need authority, that means there's going to be something that, that we have to exercise on. Correct? That's why he gave it to us. And, uh, and this is what we're learning because a lot of the church don't understand their authority as a believer. And what has been really delegated to them, and some people, oh, well, you know, they they think they're being humble, but they're being taken advantage of. God has given, it's not power in and of ourselves, it's not authority that I have delegated to myself, it's a delegation of authority from Jesus Christ, the head of the church, for all believers to exercise, to walk in, and how do we do that? How do we do it? This is, these are things that we've been talking about. Well, one thing is if the enemy comes to us and, he, and, and presents us with things and, and, and lies and deception that is contrary to anything that God's word has to say, we don't just roll over and let him do it. This is where we have to, but if we do roll over, he will. You know, But if we exercise our authority, put our hand up and say, no, you won't in Jesus' name. I resist you, and the Bible says, when I do, you have to flee. And then you, 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 you say what is written, and you, and you use the Word of God. And these are all important principles. They're steps. But, of course, you have to know the Word of God to be able to speak it, right? And that's why we said that even yesterday, that the most important thing is to be spending time in God's Word so you have something to draw on. Amen? So that's what we've been uh, learning about. But the church is his body. It completes him as he fills everything in every way. But this authority is for the benefit of the church. Jesus didn't need it in heaven. <laughs> He's, he rules there. There's no problems there. We need it here on this earth. We need it so that we can take authority over the spiritual forces, wickedness, the, the, the God of this world, and, uh, and walk in the blessing of God. Amen? To rule and reign and triumph 
until Jesus returns. Glory to God. Uh, Our next scripture that we read is found in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. Paul continues praying here. He says, I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you whose power is at work in me. By your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Love, knowing how much God loves us, enables us to trust him. Right? That's the whole faith working by love. Right? And of course treating each other kindly and walking in love towards one another. I mean, we can't expect God to do for us if we're not willing to do for others. Isn't that the golden rule? I mean, people who don't even know the Bible know the goal will do unto others as you'd want done unto you. Treat others the way you'd want to be treated. And, uh, you know, so, you know, First John in the, in the gospel, the first John, the, the, the apostle, said so many things about love and how the love of God needs to be something that as believers we need to walk in, preferring one another, you know, and doing those kind of things, um, as well as understanding that that's how God sees us and treats us. So when we know that he loves us that way, it causes us to believe him, causes us to trust him. And when, he, when we see scriptures that say, myself, I have taken your sickness and disease. I've carried them to the cross. And with my stripes, you were healed. Well, you believe him because you know that he loves you. And we just, you know, I mean, perfect timing, you know, with the cross, the crucifixion, what Jesus did and accomplished. And, uh, and, and he delegated that authority that he took from the devil. He gave us the authority back the way it was supposed to be when it was in the garden. Amen? But it's the love of God, the love of God. Glory to God. And then our last one that we're going to read this morning, uh, our prayer anyway, is found in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. Paul continues to pray here. He says, For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me, with the knowledge of your will or your word through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. This was Paul's priority to know, and it needs to be ours. It's important. When you have uh, knowledge of God's word, which we get that by spending time in it, right? You can get knowledge of anything. It's whatever you're spending your time in, and uh, it, it produces spiritual wisdom and insight. He says, I'm asking this, so that I will live the kind of life, the Christian walk, walking like a believer that proves that I belong to you, Lord. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. That means you will grow into being able to treat people kindly. You know, there are some people that just by nature, weren't the nicest people, right? But even a person like that, if they will begin to fill themselves with the knowledge of God and stay in his, they will begin to grow and produce those kind of good works. Uh, there, you know, people have changed and people can change. The word of God will change you if you allow it to change you. You know, some people used to be uh, overcome with fear, fear of everything. And then as they began to see what the Word of God says, they have peace now. They don't fear. They have faith instead, you know. And, and same thing with walking in love, which, which we have been talking about. But the Word of God and, and, and understanding and having knowledge of it produces this good work, this change in us, right? That's what Paul's talking about. Paul is a perfect example of it. 
isn't it? I mean, here we are. He's praying this, but he changed drastically from a person who didn't like Christians at all. He was, you know, he was a religious uh, zealot, and he did not like Christianity. And the Lord used him to minister to the Gentiles. And, uh, and so there's a man, and that's, I guess, why he's praying these kind of prayers, right? Because he's been there. This is how I'm proving that I belong to you, only by having knowledge and replacing the knowledge that I had with knowledge of your word and your will, right? Doesn't that, um, you know, when we replace our old thinking with God's ways, now we begin to think like he does. And, you know, I've asked this question so many times. Um, are, we, are we different than we were six months ago? Do we believe differently than we did six months ago? Do we think differently than we did six months ago? We absolutely did. And how did that happen? How did it happen? Did you, did you sit down and say, I'm going to change everything about me the way I think? No. What we started doing, and you guys have been dedicated and committed, you've been coming, you've been spending time in the Word, you've been listening to it every day here, and you've been filling yourself with the knowledge of His Word, and it replaced the old religious thinking or the old knowledge that we may have had or preconceived ideas about who God is, right? And we found truth, and the truth has made us free. And uh, the devil can't stand that, and that's why he blinds the minds of people from ever taking that initial step to begin to see the truth, to begin to open up God's word. You know, you, you, I, I've spoken with people, and they want to argue with you right away, and I, and I said this, I think, yesterday. I don't argue. I will not argue with someone about Scripture. And I, I tell them straight up, listen, don't take my word for it. Don't even listen to me because everyone says, oh, talk is cheap. I say, listen, here's a Bible. If you don't have one, I'll give you one. Open up to the Gospel of John. That's what I tell them. And read the Gospel of John. But make sure you read it. Don't just tell me, okay, okay. And then do, uh, you know, just read it for yourself. And then when you're done, call me, and we'll talk about it. And, you know, it, if they read it, then they call me. If they don't read it, then they don't call me back anyway. But it changes a person. They receive knowledge from God's Word, right? They receive knowledge from His Word, and it, and it produces in their life. So getting back to this, he said, Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge. Here we are. There's that word again about you. He says, I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy, with a smile on my face. There's that word joy. If the devil can rob your joy, he'll rob your patience and he'll rob your faith. He will. And, uh, and we don't recognize that at times, but the scriptures that say that the joy of the Lord is our strength is so true because um, you can have joy in the midst of trying times. You can, and that equates to having peace when things seem like, you know, how could you be, how could you be peaceful right now with what's going on? Well, because the joy of the Lord is on the inside of me, and you know, it, it's like the uh, Ronald Reagan story with the kid. You know, there's. With all this manure in this room, there's got to be a horse down here somewhere. And you know what I mean? And, and so uh, when you have joy like that, doesn't mean that, you won't, that, that there won't be situations and problems, but our minds could start to reel when, when we have conflict, when we have situations that arise with people, you know, and, and, and it could get us into a, a mindset and keep us... Um, upset, you know, and that's the enemy trying to take our joy from us, but we have to do something about that. That, that, that comes down to the authority of a believer that we've been talking about and say, no, I refuse. I'm not denying that this, these situations had someone didn't just say what they said and that I felt the way I felt, but in spite of those things, I will not lose my joy. And what is my joy? You know what my joy is? The fact that when it's all said and done, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. 
So think about that for a minute. It doesn't matter what else happens. When, it, when the dust settles, and it will eventually, my name is written in God's guest book, his family book, family tree. My name is written right in there. Glory to God. And you know what? That makes your joy. It centers you again. You get refocused, and you don't look at the problems. But the enemy wants to keep us looking at the problems and inundating us with, and, and, you know, people don't understand that they yield to different things. It's a spiritual battle, you know, but it's, it's, it's the enemy who wants to keep us when you're doing good, you're setting out to do the right thing. And then people treat you wrong for some reason or whatever. And you're like, you know, what, what is, what's wrong? What's wrong with people? You know, and if you start thinking about what's wrong with people, it won't be too long before you lose your joy. But if you start looking at your answer and you start looking to God who's never failed you and never let you down, your joy comes right back. And it, joy, his joy, gives you strength. It gives us strength. Even talking about it right now, our bodies are being strengthened. You know, we begin to think of his goodness in our life, and it, and it, uh, it, it helps us. And there it is. So he said that, uh, that I be strengthened with his glorious might, with all the power, that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy, with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness, and you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Glory be to God. Now, isn't that good news? We are no longer bound by the works of darkness. We are free and been translated into a new, new, new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the devil has no authority over us anymore, which brings us to what we've been talking about. Yesterday, we started along taking our our place, right? We said taking your place. We read from Ephesians chapter 2. We read Colossians, if we've been risen with Christ. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, then we need to seek the things which are above where Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. That's exactly what I was just talking about, thinking about God things, right? Not about the problems, not about what people have said to us or how they've mistreated us, not denying that. I mean, people could say very hurtful things. But if we allow that to continue to fester, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin us. We have to stop that immediately and say, nope, you know what? Lord, I pray for them. If they talk to me like that and, they, and it was wrong and I didn't do anything to deserve that, your word says to pray for them. And so that's what I'm going to do. And guess what? The devil does not want you praying for anybody. So you watch how fast those thoughts go away. He'll stop with those thoughts. He's like, oh, no, that's not working. He's praying for them now. You know, so, so those, those thoughts will go away, right? Doing it, and that is setting our affection on things above. Uh, the, the elevation of the believer to be seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father took place at the resurrection. When Jesus was risen, we were risen with him. Even though we were dead in our trespasses and sin, Christ died for us. For this moment in time, here we are. You know, now we need to meditate on this until it becomes real to us. Remember, every heavenly blessing is ours. The Bible says it. But we have to take our place and exercise our authority to enjoy those benefits. And uh, the believer whose eyes have been opened to this, this right of ours, being seated in, seeing yourself, seated in heavenly places with Christ, a believer who his eyes, our eyes are open to that, what we do is we accept this position and we begin to exercise our spiritual authority that that sitting next to the Father confers on us, right? Does everybody understand what I mean by that? We're seated there in a position of authority and uh, when the enemy tries to come with things that are, that are contrary to God's word, It's up to us right then and there. Either we're going to allow it or we're going to put our foot down and say, no, you you stop right where you're at. You can't do this. You're trespassing. It's illegal. You know it is. I know it is. And I'm not going to allow you to do it. And it's that simple. But most people, 
will just roll over. Oh, I hope this goes away. Why is this still happening? And, and, and the enemy accommodates him with thoughts. Yeah, it's happening because, you know, you're not a good Christian. Or it's happening because God's word doesn't really work. And then he'll bring every other kind of thought to you. But if we don't shut that door right away, he's the master of deception. He is. And you can't play that with him because he'll whip us every time. But if we'll get him in the arena of faith. And speaking God's word will destroy him and defeat him every single time. Like Jesus did. He said, it is written. It is written. So, the devil resents our entrance <laughs> into his domain. He resents it. He has been used to exercising authority and ruling over someone's life. So, he'll concentrate his forces against us when we come into these mighty truths. Think about what I'm saying. Now his cover's been blown, so he's used to just exercising authority over whoever he wants, but now we realize that we are seated with Jesus in heavenly places, and he no longer has, the enemy devil had, no longer has authority over us. So when we begin to recognize this, he resents that, and he comes at us even harder to, to, to get us to relinquish. He wants us to let go. He wants us to let go. Believers should never let go. We're not letting go and letting God. We are holding fast and fighting the fight of faith. Does everybody understand that? That's our position. That is what is required of us. We are soldiers. And so we're not just going to lay back and, and, and say, well, I guess it's not God's will. That's what people who don't want to fight is what they say. And, I mean, that's a cop-out. Or, you know, God and his sovereign ways, we just don't know. Yes, we do know. If you read the word, you'll see what he's told us we can do and how we should live. Right? And these are facts that are, that are founded on God's truths and his word. And, and so, no truth encounters such opposition as the truth of the authority of the believer. When the enemy sees that we have, and he can't do anything to us, he could come to us with deception and reason and all these things. He can allow, he can try to influence other people to, to say or do something to us, which will cause us. Do you see how he does it, though? He doesn't just come to you and say, I'm going to try and destroy you right now. Because we are smart enough to recognize that. Right, And we would say, no, you won't. We know what the word says. But we don't say we know what the word says when he comes with us through somebody else saying something to get us mad. Right? Those, we start to look at the situation. We don't recognize that, you know what? This is an attack from the devil to try to get me to lose my joy. And now if I lose my joy, I'm not going to be walking in love. And if I'm not walking in love, I'm not going to be able to operate in faith like I should. And, and you see how all of a sudden, and then things all, it's the pile on effect. And then he comes with something else. And, and the, the way we stop that is just shut him down, say, stop in the name of Jesus, open up my Bible, and I start looking at what the Word says. And that quick, joy returns and we stop his, his move. But it's so important for us to recognize that this truth of the authority of, of the believer encounters such opposition from the enemy. And I don't say that to make people afraid. I don't want people to go, oh, well, then I'm not going to exercise my authority. Either way, if you don't, he's going to rule your life and ruin it. Or you can fight and win. Because what did, what did he tell us? That he always causes us to triumph, doesn't he? Always. Always means always, always, no matter what. So we don't want to take the attitude, oh, well, great, Pastor. Thanks for sharing this with us because now he's gonna, uh, I'm going to have opposition. Well, you're a soldier. <laughs> and soldiers deal with opposition. Uh, if you want to win, then you got to get up and you gotta, you got to swing right back. God has given us spiritual armor, didn't he? I put my armor on every single day. I get up and I put on my armor. I go through the motion. I speak it out. My belt of truth, my breastplate of righteousness, my boots, my shield of faith, my helmet of salvation, and my sword of the spirit. This is our battle dress uniform. 
These are our BD, spiritual BDUs. And uh, we got we got to put it on. We can't sit home and hide and say, oh, I'm not going to exercise any authority. Devil, I don't want to upset you today. Are you kidding me? No. Who do you want on your team? Someone who's a warrior or someone who's going to sit home and say, oh, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Let's just all get along nice. The devil's not going to get along nice with anyone. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He'll lie to you and say he's your friend, and he'll lie to you and make you believe other things while he's got his arm around you and you're walking towards the end of the cliff, and, and then he just kicks you right off. He'll do it. He'll walk you right to the edge because that's how he is. I wouldn't walk anywhere with him. I tread on him with my armor, and I plunge my sword right into the works of darkness and I, and with, with the light of the gospel, and that irritates him. And he'll try to challenge and oppose it, but we have to exercise our authority, right? Who we are in Christ, who we are in Christ. And so that's the battle. That is the fight of faith because he's going to try to oppose us and we're going to continue going forward. Not, not relegating, not shrinking back, not quitting and saying, oh no, uh, this, this faith thing has turned my life into a, uh, it's a constant battle. <laughs> it's a winning battle. It's a winning battle. If we want to make progress, we're going to fight the fight of faith and we're going to overcome we're going to, the, the, we, we read these prayers. We are going to overcome. He said, give me all the power. Strengthen me with all the power that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy. We have these heroes of faith to look at for our admonition. Every one of them had to fight the fight of faith. Every one of them. And we are just as well. But you know what? We're living in even more an exciting time because we're, gonna, we're the generation that's going to get to see the second coming. The, the, Jesus coming back for his church, which is awesome. I want to be about my father's business when that happens. I don't want to be doing something else and caught, you know, uh, oh, well, well, Lord, I just, it's like the men with the talents. You know, he gave one guy uh, five, he gave one guy ten, and then he gave the one guy one talent, and he went and buried it in the ground. And he said, well, you know, I just figured it'd be safe there. I know that you're a, a hard man, and, and you know, I, I didn't want to lose it, so I just buried it. He said, you'd have been better off at least just putting it in the bank and let it collect interest than burying it. So we don't want to be the ones that are just hiding out. I don't want to ruffle feathers. Listen, I'm not doing it to ruffle feathers, but here's the deal. Truth is truth. Truth is going to ruffle feathers. It, 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 it certainly upsets the enemy, but he's a defeated foe and he knows it. And he'll just keep working to try to get us to quit. But we have to be determined. Are you determined today that you will not quit? I will not relent. I will not change my confession of faith. I will not change my stance I will say what God says in my last breath. I will be saying what God says. And that's faith. And you know what? The enemy, when you do that, he has no access to you. He'll try, but you just keep smacking him out of the way. Slap him out of the way every time. Resist, you're gone. Loser, bye. Slap, gone. And, and, and he just gets his teeth knocked around. That's it. But... We have to fight the fight of faith. People will get tired of that. They'll grow weary. And we have scriptures that tell us, do not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, if we don't quit, what's it say? We shall inherit the promise. In due season, if we do not quit, we will receive the promise. The promise. But can you see that the walk of faith and the life of a believer is not for the weak and, 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 and half-hearted. It's a full-on walk of faith. It's a, it's, a, it's a marathon. It is a determination. And we stir ourselves up. We get ourselves strong in the Lord, strengthened because we spend time with God and his word. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, maybe someone here, someone watching online, you may have been dealing with some things, and, they, and you could sense the enemy trying to take your joy and rob you of your faith. Well, you have to put your foot down today. 
exactly what we're talking about and say, I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. These things are all subject to change, but God's word never changes. And if he says that his joy gives me strength, then Father, I take your joy. I take your joy right now. How do you take his joy? By faith, by faith. I look at him instead of looking at the problem. That's it. He's our answer. So uh, the only place of safety is to be seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion. Isn't that what Jesus said? And that's positionally, that's where we are seated. If, if a believer abides steadfastly by faith in this place, he cannot be touched by the enemy. He cannot be touched by the enemy. So we need to take our seat in the heavenly places and keep it and rule and reign. Doesn't mean that kings don't, that they're in a place of authority. They're seated in a place of safety, but they still have to make decrees and demands, don't they? And that's what God, that's how he wants us to see ourselves, that the enemy will still try to do things, but as a king, we just decree it. We say, nope, that's not going to happen. Away with them. And, and that's exactly what we do with the, the devil. No, Satan, that is not going to happen. You've already been defeated. You're a loser, the loser, and I, I'm a winner. And he always causes me to triumph. So you have to go in Jesus' name and then stand your ground. Stand your ground. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get into, uh, I, I kind of have, let me see here. What else do I want to, uh, there was another example that I wanted to give you guys, but I don't want to start a whole thing now. And uh, time's almost up anyway. Well, we could talk a little bit about the armor because I did want to talk about that, you know, putting on the, the message of the armor tells us how to take our place and maintain it against the devil, right? In Ephesians, it talks about stand therefore, stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth. Do we need to know the truth? Is the truth making us free? How do we find truth? By reading it, by opening up his word. Will you find truth watching the news? No, you won't. You'll be filled with everybody else's opinion, and it's nothing but lies. And if you go back 20 years, if, you, if you're a person who has watched Fox News, okay, for 20 years, and I, and I like Sean Hannity, I do, but the truth of the matter is he's been saying the same thing for 20 years. I turn it on sometimes, and, 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 and I agree with what he's saying, but nothing changes. Nothing changes. You know, it just, in, it, it just incites, it gets you mad, that's all. That's all it does. So I don't want to watch that. It's not helping me. It's only irritating me. Any news, if I want to know truth, and I want to make advances, and I want things to change, I have to open up the Bible to do so. We have to know the truth, and the truth will change us. It'll make us free. So the first thing is, we're talking about the armor, is our, we put on our belt of truth. Put on the belt of truth. Arm ourselves with the truth of God's word. What does God's word say about healing? There's a bunch of scriptures. There's Galatians 3.13. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, which is sickness, disease, destruction, and spiritual death. And uh, uh, according to Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2.24 and, and Matthew 8.17, we have been brought near. We've been redeemed. Himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, carried our pain and disease to the cross. And with his stripes, we were healed. And if we were, then we are. And guess if we are, we will be tomorrow, the next day, and the day after. It's part of who we are in Christ. It's part of our covenant. Now, that's a truth that we need to arm ourselves with on a daily basis. That's part of our spiritual armor. This goes hand in hand with maintaining our place, our rightful place in heavenly places with Christ and walking in that truth. And you know what? I'm going to end there because there's a lot more to get into on this, and I don't want to... Uh, 
to cut it short. Um, that's a good place for us to end. We will be back again, though, tomorrow at 1030. So make sure you come. Uh, also, tonight we have our Wednesday evening service. I'll be doing that service tonight at 7 p.m. So if you're in the area, please come out. We will be live streaming it. But come and see us tonight. Amen. Guys, keep the switch of faith turned on. Keep pushing forward. Don't quit. Now is not the time to grow weary, but to keep going ahead and doing what the Word of God tells us to do. Amen.